Aventor officer, David Yusek, to please tell us about this fascinating story. It's a piece of um, our history. First, I want to thank you, Mayor, for inviting me down here and allowing me to speak about my friend. Thank you to the City Council, to the City Manager, Chief of Police. Thank you. So many people never heard of my friend's story. It's kind of a unique aventure story. Let me introduce myself once again. My name is David Yusek. I'm a retired police officer. I transferred from the town of Surfside over to Aventura in about 1999. Started working off duty jobs in uniform, helped pay the bills, and I met a very unique man at the movie theater, a four foot nine inch man that um, would come there. I'm gonna try to get a little video going for you guys. So that's actually me and my special friend. His name is Richard Flaherty. In the video, he's 69 years old, but I met him in his late 50s, and we were friends for about 15 years. Uh, it wasn't until maybe two years that I realized he was homeless, and I would see him out in the street. And obviously, as a police officer, my first job is to try to get him some type of assistance and get him into a shelter. Uh, unfortunately, Richard didn't want to get any assistance and we have what's known as a, a Baker Act law in Florida, and that's when a person becomes a danger to themselves or others that I can uh, almost uh, force them into seeing a, a doctor or going to a hospital. But my friend never met that criteria. He also never wanted to talk about his past. So that was our friendship. We would talk about the world and politics, and he was a very intelligent man, and I enjoyed his company, and we'd go for coffee and sandwiches. So in the summer of 2015, in this Subway sandwich shop, Richard finally decides to tell me who he really is. He just looks me in the eye and says, Dave, it's time I tell you my life story. And I'm like, you know, as cops, we're kind of a skeptical bunch where we've seen, unfortunately, too many bad things. So I wasn't sure what my friend was going to say, but I was nervous. So what he said to me was, I'm the smallest man ever served in the United States military. I went to Vietnam and I served. And my first thoughts were I felt really bad because I thought my friend was a little bit more grounded. I knew there was no such thing as four foot nine, 95 pound people in the military. I know there's a height and weight requirement and I was concerned with his mental health. But he continued his story. He claimed to be a triple volunteer, volunteering to go into the military, then volunteering to go into an elite uh, paratrooper unit, the 101st Airborne. And then he made the craziest claim that he was a, a Green Beret captain. So this was, this was about as bad as it could get, and I just felt horrible. And I thanked him you know, for his story, and. You can see him there sitting there telling me his story. I thanked him for his story and uh, went home that night, you know, pretty sad about my friend's condition. And I started really thinking about what I got to do to get him off the streets. So I went home that night, started taking off my uniform, didn't even think about checking his story because it's impossible. There's no such thing. But for some reason, just Googled who is the smallest man ever served in the military. And what do you know? Pictures of him started popping up. Richard Flaherty from Stanford, Connecticut, smallest man to serve in the military. So he did go to Vietnam. He did go uh, serve his country. Uh, unfortunately, you know, war is is about the ugliest thing a person can have to be involved in. It's it's something we do to sometimes protect our freedom, but it, there's a very large price to pay. Richard told me his story. When I went back to him the next day, he was kind of smiling because he knew I didn't believe him when he was telling me the day before. But um, he kind of told me that he felt it was time to tell me his story because he wanted me to get his story out to the world as a cautionary tale. The cautionary tale is when our men and women come back from war or come back from the military, helping them transition back to civilian life, which it was hard for him. Some of the other reasons later on that I learned was he suffered from extreme PTSD, and now we understand traumatic brain injuries. And one thing, uh, stories that I, I got from his comrades in Vietnam was when the explosions were going off, 
based on his body weight, he was always getting tossed around. So nobody really thought about that, uh, the traumatic brain injuries that he endured. But that's the reason why my friend became uh, homeless. So his story, unfortunately, doesn't have a happy ending. Uh, about a week after he told me his life story, he was unfortunately hit in a hit-and-run uh, vehicle accident and lost his life. But I spent the next few years researching his life, and his story is incredibly, incredibly inspirational. It had a tragic ending, but that's not the way he lived, and he wasn't sad, and he didn't talk bad about the country or the government. He always believed that we can do anything we want to do and never to be a victim. So I am beyond thankful for the uh, council for letting me speak for a few minutes. I have one last little video of my friend for those who are watching maybe this on YouTube or a live feed saying, there's no way the story is true. I just want to add one last thing. I was lucky to have the opportunity to work here as a police officer for almost 20 years. And it's because of the support of my police chief back then, which was Steve Steinberg, the city manager, Eric Soroka. They allowed me to work part time on investigating my friend's life and putting together a documentary about him. So I just want to really thank the uh, council because the most important thing, our job is to protect persons and property. Property is far, far down the road than persons. We're here to assist people. That's the job of police officers. It, the other stuff, the property and upholding the law is secondary. And the city of Aventura allowed me to flourish and uh, to try to do as much as I could to help. Thank you so much, everyone. Mm -hmm.